Hello everyone, and welcome to Gamesplaining, where I take a look at games and explain them to you in the best way I know. I tell you what I think about them, basically. Now, this is Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Most of you have probably heard of it, it's made quite some splashes in the community quite recently. Released um, two days ago of this recording, and uh, it is a very interesting game. It is a very fun game, I've been playing it a bit. Now, uh, this game is from the company From Software, and uh, it is their latest game, the latest game in their repertoire, and uh, they are mostly known for the Dark Souls series as well as the Bloodborne series. Now, that is not to say that they haven't done other games. Um, I had to check it out a bit, but uh, the uh, game itself is... Uh, it's quite similar to another game that they worked with another company on, basically. Um, but let's not uh, go too much into that. Let's focus on Sekiro, because this game does some things extremely well that I have not seen other games do. This is basically a stealth game, and... Uh, a com like a really solid combat system in one. Usually that doesn't go together a lot. Mostly games usually focus on stealth and then some combat, not an extreme amount. But this game has kind of a solid stealth system. It's not too advanced, but the combat system is very interesting. So in Sekiro, what basically changes this game compared to a Dark Souls game or a Souls-like? I guess you could call it. In Sekiro, you are not as much focused on blocking and dodging, kind of like in Bloodborne. Obviously you have that ability, but it is not your main ability of reducing damage or preventing yourself from taking damage. The main ability that you have in this is that you can block and deflect attacks. And that is also a very important part of killing enemies. If you would say deflect a attack from an enemy, this affects what they call their posture. Now, posture is something that both you and the enemies have, and if you fill your posture meter, you basically become stunned. If an enemy becomes stunned, you can perform a death blow, kind of similarly to how I'm stealth killing these. You can do that in combat if you break down their posture. And uh, the combat is basically a lot about learning how to deflect attacks, how to destroy the enemy's posture as effectively as possible, as well as uh, what kind of attacks you should be dodging and what kind of attacks you should be trying to deflect or blocking. That is a lot of the game. It's kind of similar to Dark Souls in that sort of sense, um, where you have, to, you have to observe your enemies for quite a bit before you can actually learn how to properly fight them. That is kind of a classic stamp on the Dark Souls and Bloodborne genres or games as You'll never basically kill a boss the first try, because you don't know what that boss does. That is basically the idea, so you ha you'll have to try several times so that you can figure out how that boss reacts, how what kind of attacks the boss have, and how you're going to handle them. Obviously in Sekiro this is also the case, but in this there is a more aggressive playstyle. Classic playstyle of uh, Dark Souls, for example, is usually a very defensive one. In Dark Souls you want to be reactive, you want the enemy to attack you first, and then you react to their attack. Bloodborne was kind of a different take that they did on, on the sort of combat system, where they made it so that you want to be the one that is basically the aggressive one. Getting hit in Bloodborne is not that bad, because you can regain health through attacking the enemy back. So you kind of want to be the aggressor. Now in Sekiro I feel like they've kind of combined both of them. Being defensive has its benefits, especially against certain opponents that have very heavy attacks or very sweeping attacks. Um, but for example against these tiny guys, being quite aggressive is actually kind of good. Because I'll, as you see there, I wear out their posture and then I can one-shot them. I really love this system actually. At first I felt like... I did not like the system to begin with. I felt like I, I didn't really understand it, I could not get my head around it. But after 
playing it for a while and actually getting used to be able to block everything. Like, I, I, I was so used to the Dark Souls and Bloodborne kind of style where in Dark Souls you are very specific with what you block. In this, obviously, you have to be careful as well. You have your posture that will break if you block too much. But you also have... Uh, you, you also don't take any damage and you don't have no stamina to worry about. So, the blocking is actually a very important part. And that was something that I were, were not doing properly to begin with in this game. But I think the most interesting part about the posture system might be the way that they can do fights. Uh, this fight against the Armored Warrior is actually a perfect example of how they are using their posture system in a super inventive way. Uh, so this character, Heavily Armored Knight, and you are a shinobi with basically just a sword that is meant to cut flesh. You can't break through his armor, so you have to find other ways to kill this enemy. If I try to uh, do a uh, finishing move on him when his posture is basically broken, I... He only just stands up with half half his posture yet again, and uh, there's not much I can do about it. So I had to figure out a different way to kill him, as you'll see in the video. Now, as I've explained kind of the system, it kind of sounds a bit simplistic, but what makes it so much more interesting and so much more innovative, I guess, is the way that they've handled the experience and the skills. So kind of like in Dark Souls, and in Bloodborne, you lose your uh, some of your experience. You don't lose all of it in this when you die. And there is also the mechanic of dying. Now, as you are uh, blessed by a by a dragonkin, you can actually resurrect yourself once each time you die. So that is kind of an interesting way to spin it up because then you can actually risk a lot of. Uh, moves. You can do a lot of more risky moves and you can die for it. You might get something done, you might kill some enemies, and then you can actually resurrect yourself to continue and kill the others. So there is some sort of strategy to that as it is like you can actually resurrect yourself. And if you survive long enough after your first resurrection, you can also resurrect yourself once again. As you see those uh, down in the left corner, you see those pink dots. They are basically the amount of times you can resurrect yourself. Now, sometimes you get limited. Um, I think there is, per fight, you can only reawaken once. But it's like, if you finish one fight, jump immediately to the next one, you can actually uh, get back up once more. I kind of like the system, but I kind of don't. Like, it, it is an interesting way to do it. I agree. But I think... Uh, that also comes with the enemies that you fight are really volatile. They're extremely dangerous and deal a lot of damage. Just basically getting hit once can almost do the damage that you see my health at right now. That is like a weak hit on me. So you can't take a lot of damage. You have to be very careful. That is basically the part of the game that it is quite interesting. You have to be aggressive but careful at the same time. And that is a very hard thing to pull off. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the way that they uh, kind of uh, increase the uh, usage and innovativeness of the, uh, of the posture system is that you have skills. You have uh, three different skill trees that I've found so far, there might be more, but I think three is the only that you have. And uh, these skill trees do give you more options in ways that you counter and fight enemies. So there's one for basically the shinobi tree, which is a lot about stealth, backstabbing. There's one that is uh, the prosthetic tree, which enhances your prosthetic arm. We'll talk a bit about that uh, quite soon. And uh, then there is also a skill tree for basically your combat skill tree. Um, now. That skill tree is where you get the most kind of interesting abilities, I guess, when it comes to the posture. Where uh, you can increase the posture damage that you do, depending on what kind of uh, playstyle you want to go for. Obviously, you can max out the skill tree, so you can get all the abilities. But uh, that is kind of the interesting way you do it. Like, I have basically an ability, which is, it is basically just a plain upgrade. But it makes it so that every time I counter or deflect an attack, I do more posture damage than I normally would. Uh, now, 
This battle, Lady Butterfly. Oh, I hated this battle. I had a hard time with her because this was basically when I was not that used to the combat system just yet. But, as I mentioned, the prosthetic skill tree will also go into the prosthetic to arm that you have. So, in the game, your character, um, Wolf or Sekiro, are missing his left arm, and it has been replaced by a prosthetic arm. Now, the prosthetic arm is, is equipped with uh, all kinds of different tools, uh, going from a hookshot, basically, to uh, a shuriken tosser, tosses, a spear that I used the last clip, and uh, there's also some kind of flamethrower. There are a lot of things in that arm, basically. I am basically Iron Man. Um, but that kind of brings uh, some variety to the combat system as well. So there are ways to do some ranged combat, like with the shurikens, to keep the enemy's posture uh, damaged, because if the enemy has the ability to get out of fighting you, their posture will go down. So you want to keep the aggression up against the enemies most of the time. Otherwise you will lose progress on the posture damage that you've done. Um, one thing to note is that the posture damage re regenerates slower the more damage the enemy has taken. So uh, for every time I hit Lady Butterfly as a regular hit like that, her posture will regenerate slower. And uh, it is quite the important thing against bosses. You want to try and get those cheeky hits in so that they don't regenerate their posture too fast. Because that is the way you're going to kill them, basically. You need to bring down their posture. Uh, this was an interesting fight. I really liked it when I think about it. I learned a lot from it. I became so much better at the game, basically, after this fight. After I played this fight, like, 15 times or whatever. But I became much better. Yeah, that is basic, kind of the basics of the game. <laughs> now, uh, there are some additional mechanics we might not talk that much about called uh, Dragon Rot, things like this, that is dependent on how many times you die. Uh, it is quite the interesting thing, so it basically makes it so that you don't want to die too much. If you die too much, you will basically start to kill NPCs around you. That is basically it. Otherwise, kind of a very similar Soulsborne game. Except with a bit more story than uh, its predecessors. You could argue that Bloodborne has a lot more story than Dark Souls, but then you could also argue that this game has a lot more story than Bloodborne. So this is actually kind of a story-based game, which is um, a bit strange for From Software, but I really like it. I hope that everyone else likes it. From what I've seen, I've been watching some videos, trying to catch some live streams, and this game is very popular right now. It is a quite a great success. I didn't expect anything less, to be honest, from From Software, but uh, it is nice to see, however. And this is uh, kind of interesting to see this. As you finish bosses in this game, you gain their memories. Now the memories is the only way for you to increase your damage. It is not like in any Dark Souls game or the Bloodborne game where you can find no. items, you know, like you switch your weapons, oh, things like this. You will always have your same oh, katana, but you will get upgrades in sort of a static sense. So every boss you kill will give you the, a memory, which increases your damage, and you can also find these prayer beads that increases your health and posture. That is the way you advance in the game. But yeah, I've kind of explained the basics of Sekiro so far, I think. I think I explained it quite well. So I'll leave it at that. I hope you liked the video, and I hope you love Sekiro the game, because I really love it. It is a great game, and I would love to see more games from From Software. They are one of my favorite developers right now. They have made some really great games, and I would love to see that continue. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.